Wife and I got into a car accident and I discovered that. Hi everyone, welcome back to another Reddit cheating story. Before we start, please hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell so you won't miss another cheating story goes live. There isn't a soul in the world I can talk about this with. I don't know if I need advice, a pep talk or what. I use my main account for memes and other BS. But I made this throw away because I'm going mad trying to cope. Life has pushed me to the edge and I'm struggling to find my integrity. Yet I question what actually are the righteous things to do, say and think. I guess to begin I need to explain that I'm typing this in a hospital room. Yesterday at about 7.30 am my wife and I were involved in a wreck. I came out with only a few cuts and bruises. Mari my wife suffered a crushed shoulder, broken collarbone, three broken ribs and a collapsed lung. They expect her to fully recover but for now they have her heavily sedated. Having to type this out on a phone is a daunting task. But at the moment I have the time to push through even if I'm not sure I have the will to do it. I wouldn't be posting in this sub if things were perfect with our marriage obviously. I just could never imagine my wife being unfaithful in any way. My heart is broken. I feel incomplete, like part of me is missing. And saddest of all, that part is sitting a mere three feet away from me. I had felt us growing apart over the last three months, but I couldn't come up with a reason why. We are both 34. Mari and I have known each other since we were children. We began dating in high school and all the way through college. She is the only woman I have ever done anything of a physical nature with. Up until recently she could say the same. We married a year after college and had our first child, Michael a year later. Three years after my son was born Carrie our daughter began a life of me trying to spoil her rotten. I love my kids more than life itself. If not for them, I'm not sure I would be here right now. They were not involved in the wreck thank God. They were spending the night at my parents. We were due to fly down to Florida for a cruise yesterday afternoon. Obviously, that is all cancelled. But my wife decided to go out with her best friend even though I urged her to get home and not drive around in the snow. She swore she and her best friend Rebecca were just going to have a few drinks since they wouldn't see each other for a week. I went to bed and slept like a baby until about 5 a.m. I got up and looked out the window to see my wife's car was not out front, but we'd gotten several more inches of snow. I assumed Mari and Becca got a little too drunk and crashed at her place. I threw some clothes on and got into my SUV. Before I left, I texted Mari to tell her not to drive because the snow was too deep and I was coming to get her. It remained unread. I cannot guess how many times I have wondered what would have happened if she'd read that text. I'd still be living a lie. I'd still have a gut feeling but I wouldn't be in the utter misery I now find myself. I got to Becca's and pulled up in front of her condo. I looked at the message again and it still had not been read. I had actually hoped Mari would read it and be ready when I arrived. But I resigned myself to the fact I'd have to go in and wake her. The front door was unlocked so I walked in and looked to the TV room to my right. There was nobody passed out on the sofa. Rebecca's bedroom was downstairs, and I didn't want to wake her. So, I took the stairs up to her guest room and opened the door. Then my life ended. I remember walking into the room and seeing two heads peeking out from the covers. I remember leaning down to pull the comforter toward me. I even remember seeing my wife laying her head on some guy's shirtless chest. The next thing I remember was Becca, Mari and some half-naked guy I'd never seen trying to pull me off of him. I'd probably be in jail right now if they hadn't. But I honestly don't remember a damn thing. So right or wrong, I don't really feel too bad about that. My wife on the other hand. Well, that changes from minute to minute these days. When I came to my senses the dude said he'd get his buddy to the hospital. Mari bawled her eyes out while Rebecca and I screamed it out. I told her and my wife I was leaving, and she had five minutes to be in my car or to not bother coming home. She was there in three minutes. Really not a good idea to be angry driving in snow, even with four-wheel drive but it was another vehicle that veered into our lane and forced us through a guardrail. That's what caused Mari's injuries. The car rolled, thank God for airbags. But we lived. The kids don't even know we had a wreck. I haven't called anyone. I probably should have. But this wasn't just a wreck. My life has been wrecked and I'm trying to gauge the damage before I start bringing others into the situation. I'm numb and yet I hurt like hell, and not from the wreck. I feel like I don't even know the person laying in that hospital bed. I want to ask her so many damn questions. But I really don't want to know any of the answers. She obviously no longer loves me. No one with a soul could cheat on someone they love. 
So, I have to ask if she ever loved me. And now that she has cheated, would I ever want her to love me again if that were possible? I don't know the specifics of when she first cheated. But in my book the instant she did, our marriage ended. The vows were broken. She ended our marriage, and we are no longer man and wife. I don't need a divorce attorney to nullify my marriage, she's already done that. Therefore I am no longer under obligation to the vows I gave. A huge part of me wants to just walk out of this room. I want to call her parents, tell them what she did and what happened, and then let them know she is their problem again after all these years. We said for better or for worse and I meant it. But we are no longer married. Part of me wants to leave her a note and tell her too bad worse happened to come after she ended our relationship. The only thing that is keeping me in this damn room is my children. I want to see them so badly right now. But I have some scratches on my face and neck. They'd know something happened if they saw me. As much as I feel my wife has defiled herself and our family, my kids need her. I thought I had a life partner. And as horrible as she ended up being, my children need a mom in their life. There are going to be talks I am not qualified to have and wouldn't know where to begin. There are going to be injuries that need kisses instead of being told to walk it off. I'm a damn good father, but I can't be a mother either. Please someone help me. How can I sit here and look over someone who has stabbed me in the back so cruelly? Should I call her parents to come? What do I tell them? I really don't want to be here, especially with her parents. If I don't tell them what she did, they are going to know I'm pissed off. What in God's name do I tell my children? Yeah, I can tell them we were in a wreck but I'm not the kind that can fake emotion. Obviously, my wife does it with ease. But when I loathe someone, it shows in my face. They will know I am angry at their mother. How the hell did my life come to this? I already know I need to see a lawyer, I've figured that much out. But how do I handle this? Here are some of the best comments from our community. First of all, take a breather. Yes, you should call her parents and ask them to take care of her because you are mentally and physically in no condition to help her, even if you would want to. Also, tell them what she did, don't start to lie for your wife, she has lied enough and these lies need to end right now. You need someone to talk to and to let your emotions out, so look for a good friend or a family member that you trust and talk to them. Don't make any life-altering decisions right now while your emotions are so raw. What you need now is distance to your wife and time to process and understand what she did there. This was not a one-time thing or something that happened out of a moment. This was long-planned and probably her long-term affair partner, maybe not even her first affair partner. If she has stayed before at Becca's place, then you better expect to know now why she stayed there. Please stay away from alcohol and drugs, they won't help you. Your marriage is over and the woman you thought she was never existed in the first place, that was only the idea you had of her. Now you know who she is and what she is capable of and sooner or later you need to ask yourself the question, if you would ask this woman to be your wife as well or if that kind of woman is not a woman you would want by your side. In the end she never wanted to come clean, never wanted to end this and keep on making decisions for her affairs and against you. She got supported in that by her best friend but in the end this all only happened because she wanted this to happen. Good luck and stay strong. And please get tested for STDs, better safe than sorry. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell for any future cheating stories.